Hello again. I want to share a few thoughts with you as we stand in this new threshold to Sino-American relations. As we think about the future, we should do so from a solid understanding of the past. In a 2018 guest lecture at Emory University, President Carter recalled, it's very important for our two countries and the world to maintain their relationship with mutual respect. We have different histories, different cultures, different ideas, and certainly different political systems, but those differences should be accommodated by presidents of the United States and by the leaders of China. Maintaining mutual respect and proper understanding between the U.S. and China is important. We share important responsibilities, and this is still absolutely crucial for our two countries and for the world. I agree with President Carter, and so do many Americans. Our relationship is too important to be driven by dueling nationalisms. Recently, there's been an alarming downturn in popular sentiment towards China and the United States, and frankly, attitudes in China are no better. Leaders in both our countries need to lower the temperature of public passions. I want to share two anecdotes that illustrate what I think is needed. The first occurred in early 1979, the post-normalization trip of Deng Xiaoping to America, his first trip to our country. At a banquet, Deng reached over, according to President Carter, and said to him, Mr. President, we've done a lot to help, you've done a lot to help me help China, and we've never done anything for you. What can I do? Forty years later, President Carter remembered that. It created trust and a feeling that the relationship was reciprocal. Similarly, in September 2001, after the Al-Qaeda attacks on America, President Jiang Zemin immediately called President George W. Bush, expressing shock and solidarity. His efforts created 10 years of more productive relations between Washington and Beijing. These statements remind us that you never get a second chance to create a first impression. Our two countries need a fresh start. We have an opportunity to put things on a better track. Certainly, President-elect Biden's promised restoration of a rational, fact-based policy process in Washington run by competent policy makers is essential, and it's taking shape as we speak. Diplomacy will be valued again, and there will be an interagency process, and there will be someone on the Washington end to pick up the phone when Beijing calls. Moreover, in some areas, the two, uh, the two presidents, Biden and Xi, share goals, at least broadly speaking. Climate change, global health, global economic management, and managing uh, at least some of the global hot spots. Our leaders both have pressing domestic challenges from which they would prefer not to be diverted by problems with each other. Nonetheless, these common points notwithstanding, we are facing daunting challenges. The U.S. will move closer to friends and allies, to be sure. This will fuel Chinese distrust. But China can shape the character of our cooperation with others by reassurance. The world needs a reassuring China as well as a reassuring America. Human rights are important and should be important, but they ought not be pursued by policies that sound like regime change. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo's July 23, 2020 speech on China policy was highly destructive in this regard. Our two countries did not join hands more than 40 years ago to change each other's internal systems. Instead, we normalized to improve our own internal circumstances and those of the world. Though President Trump will soon leave office, with a popular vote tally of about 74 million, 
he and those who he represents will continue to be a force in our society and in governance. Turning to more concrete uh, things on the agenda for the next few months, I would include the following. Job one is to keep several of the hot spots in U.S.-China relations from escalating, not least Taiwan. Two, we should restart improved high-level dialogue, better, smaller, more focused on results, and including serious strategic dialogue where each side defines what it would consider a strategic equilibrium with which it would be satisfied. We should also strengthen communications with China's ambassador in Washington and name someone as ambassador to Beijing, someone like Leonard Woodcock, who was appointed in mid-1977 to bring us into a new era at that time. And finally, both sides should use the next two or so months to forge areas where cooperation can occur, including rejoining the World Health Organization and cooperation with Beijing on international health work. We should return a full complement of our personnel to the CDC in China. Work with John Kerry on climate change. Consider restarting the bilateral investment treaty talks. Restore mutually beneficial educational and cultural exchanges, not least the Fulbright program, and make foreign students feel welcome again in America. And a final suggestion is to promptly reopen the Houston and Chengdu consulates. In the last few months, our two countries have overcome systemic challenges. In our case, we have preserved our democracy, and in China's case, it impressively managed the COVID-19 epidemic after the initial period. Each of our countries should be more confident as we deal with each other. Dealing with each other implies a competitive dimension along with cooperation. The mere fact of competition, however, implies equality between our two nations. Thank you very much and thank you for your support of the Foundation.